BTEC Applied Science Unit 3. This is my third video about enzymes. Factors affecting enzyme activity. Now, there are four factors that you should know. pH, temperature, substrate concentration and enzyme concentration. And I will talk in another video about the experiments you should be familiar with. In fact, you should get a chance to actually do the experiments. But these are the four factors that you need to know the effect of. What do we mean by the rate of a chemical reaction? Well, it's how quickly the reaction happens. You start with things which react together, called the reactants, and stuff is produced, and that is called the product. So reactants go to products. How quickly does this happen? Uh, what would you measure to find out the rate of a reaction? Well, basically, how quickly the reactants are used up. You could measure the mass of the reactants, possibly. Uh, and how quickly, in other words, how much divided by time, how quickly the products are produced. Again, possibly measuring the mass of the products or the volume of the products. So the rate of a reaction. Now, describe the motion of the particles in a liquid. This animation represents the particles in a liquid. They don't have fixed positions. They are jiggling around, banging into each other. That's the particles in a liquid. Collision theory basically says that a reaction takes place when two molecules bang into each other with enough energy. If you imagine two molecules jiggling around in a liquid, they bang into each other. And if they have enough energy, then we talked in the last video about activation energy. If they have enough energy, then a chemical reaction might happen. OK, and this is called collision theory. Now, if we increase the temperature of the reactants, then the particles are moving faster. They have more kinetic energy and uh, they collide more often. So when they collide, they have more energy and they collide more often. Does this mean that the reactions involving enzymes will happen at a faster rate if we increase the temperature? Well, if we increase the temperature, then a chemical reaction will be more likely to happen. It's a little bit more complicated, though, because above a certain temperature, then what happens is that the bonds holding the enzyme in shape might be broken. I did mention that some of the bonds aren't particularly strong. And if the shape of the active site changes, then the enzyme can't do its job. We say that the enzyme has been denatured. Don't say it's been killed because it's not alive. It has been denatured. OK, typically this happens uh, with biological enzymes. It happens above about 40 degrees centigrade, which is kind of around about our body temperature. The active site of the enzyme changes shape and it can no longer bind to the substrate. It has been denatured and it doesn't work properly anymore. Look at this graph, be able to sketch this graph. What happens to the rate of reaction when we increase the temperature? Well, it increases up to a certain temperature, the optimum best temperature for the enzyme. And then above that, the reaction rate goes down uh, and eventually the enzymes are destroyed by uh, being denatured because the shape of the active site means that they don't work anymore. Typically, the optimum best temperature for biological enzymes is somewhere around 38, 39, 40 degrees centigrade. pH. You remember what pH is. Very, very strong acids around 1 up to very, very strong alkalines about 14. You should remember what pH means. What would be the pH of a strong acid? I've just told you. What would be the pH of a weak alkali? Well, it'd be about eight or nine. pH seven is neutral. Now, certain enzymes work best at a certain pH. Okay, 
it depends on the enzyme. The enzymes in your stomach work best uh, in acidic conditions, which is why we have stomach acid amongst other reasons. It also helps to kill germs that we ingest. But the enzymes in your stomach work best in acidic conditions. The enzymes in your intestine work best in alkali conditions. Okay, it depends on the enzyme, what pH they work best at. Uh, an acid means there's lots of H plus ions. An alkali means there's not very many H plus ions. And it's the concentration of these H plus ions, basically protons, which will affect the structure of the enzyme. We said that the, the enzyme is held together. These uh, alpha helix and beta pleated sheets are held together by hydrogen bonds, and they are very sensitive to the concentration of hydrogen ions. OK, therefore, it's very sensitive to pH. Now, all of these people want to get a taxi to go to the airport, okay? And so lots and lots of people go to the taxi rank uh, and the taxi takes them to the airport. Now, imagine the people represent the substrate, the stuff which is being broken down. Imagine the taxis represent the enzyme. What will affect how many people are taken to the airport every hour? OK, let's think about the substrate concentration, which is the number of people. If there are more people, then more people will be taken to the airport every hour. OK, more substrate will be broken down every second, but up to a limit. If you've only got a certain number of taxis, then it can't take more people to the airport. So basically, the if you increase the substrate concentration, the rate of reaction will increase, but then up to a limit uh, and then it won't affect it anymore because basically all of the enzymes or all of the taxis, if you like, will be busy. So remember the shape of that graph. Now, more substrate molecules is a greater reaction rate up to a limit. If all the enzyme molecules are occupied, then having more substrate molecules will not increase the rate of reaction. If all of the taxis are busy, then having more people waiting will not increase the number of people being taken to the airport. What will increase it? Well, if you increase the number of taxis, so this is enzyme concentration, then if you increase the enzyme concentration, then the rate of reaction will increase. That's as long as the enzyme concentration is a lot less than the substrate concentration. You know, then you would have too many taxis. The reaction rate will increase with increased enzyme concentration. Questions. What four factors affect enzyme activity? Describe and explain what effect each factor has. Sketch a graph of how the rate of reaction would vary as each factor changes. Be able to do this by yourself. They're only little questions, but I would expect big answers for each of them. Good detail in your answers, please.